This is the Louis T. Network. Hey, either you're outside or you're in the lab room. Who else could it be? Me, join me. Louis T, welcome. You are in the lab room, of course. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. Day one of the 2016 NFL Scouting Combine in the books. Let's discuss offensive linemen and running backs on day one of the on the field drills at the combine. And I must say, running backs impressed. Offensive line was okay, wasn't great. Let's talk about it quickly and move on so that you can refuel and recharge the battery and get ready for day two because it's a biggie. Wide receivers and quarterbacks in day two. So let's talk about these offensive linemen and running backs. We start with the old line, Laramie Tunzel, big attraction with that group. Did not run the 40, decided against it. And look, I don't have a problem with it. 40 yard dash for an offensive lineman. How often is it that an offensive lineman actually runs 40 yards? So I don't have a problem with him saying, ah, don't want to run the 40, don't want to risk an injury. We actually saw an offensive lineman pull up lane, running one of his 40s. So I didn't have a problem with Laramie Tunzel saying, nah, I'm not gonna run the 40, I'm doing it my pro day. Wanted to see the on the field drills with him and I thought he was magnificent. Phenomenal, made it look easy. Effortless, his back, his shuffle, kick slide, all of that, the base, athleticism, quick feet, you saw it all on display on the on the field drills with Larry Tunzel. I thought he was phenomenal, and I thought he showed why he's probably going to be the number one overall selection in this draft. Ronnie Stanley, 5 2 40. That again, not a big deal for me. What was a big deal with me was I thought he looked a little stiff. I wasn't that impressed with Ronnie Stanley. I don't think he hurt himself. I don't think he necessarily hurt helped himself in day one of the combine either. I didn't think he was that impressive. To be honest with you, I saw other guys that I thought really came away and helped themselves. And I didn't think Ronnie Stanley was one of them, but at the end of the day, the tape says something else. And Ronnie Stanley's probably still going to be the second offensive tackle off the board when it's all said and done. Jason Spriggs is a guy that I think helped himself immensely at the combine. Offensive tackle out of Indiana. I thought he was phenomenal. Athletically, he checked off every single box. After Laramie Tunzel, to me, he was the next most impressive guy from an offensive line standpoint at the combine in day one. I thought he blew just about every statistical category away. The cone, 4 9 4, 40, the best time of any offensive lineman at the combine this year. I thought he was phenomenal and I thought he moved his feet well in the, in the slide drills when he had to get out of his stance. He looked natural in the mirror drill. I thought he was excellent. I thought he was flawless the entire day and I thought Jason Spriggs probably helped himself more so than any offensive lineman in the draft with his performance at the combine. Ryan Kelly, uh, Mike Mayock's number one rated center in the draft out of Alabama. I thought he was excellent as well after Spriggs I thought he was another guy that helped himself tremendously with his performance. He's a bigger center. He's around 6'4", big guy, but he moved well for his size. 5'0", 40, so he was moving up and down the line, and, and I thought he got out of his stance when they had to snap the ball, and he had to get out of his stance and kick slide. He didn't open up his hips too soon. I thought he did a phenomenal job there. thought he was clean in the uh, uh, mirror drill. I thought he did everything well, cone, all of that stuff. He looked the part of an NFL safety, uh, or excuse me, center. And I think he's going to be another one of these guys that is going to walk away from the combine feeling really good about what he put forth at the combine. Cody Whitehair, another one of these guys as a tackle slash guard prospect at the next level, 5.0840. So he ran well, offensive tackle out of K-State, thought that he did really well and he looks like a natural tackle but again he might be one of those guys that kicks inside the guard either way i thought he helped himself at the combine as well so another guy that i thought performed well looked well in all of the drills moved well did everything that he needed to do to check some boxes off to put himself in the best position to be drafted as highly as possible and jack Conklin, a guy that we don't talk about a lot but i think Slowly but surely, he's making his way up these draft boards, and I think he's the guy that with his performance at the Combine probably solidified himself as a first-round pick. And I think he was going to be a first-round pick anyway, but now I'm starting to see Jack Conklin's name go up, and I think he really did himself a huge, huge favor 
by performing the way he did. Five flat in the 40, one of the best times of any offensive lineman. I thought he moved well in that first group of offensive linemen. I thought he was the best of those guys, and I thought he went out and showed why his name is going to come off the board. When you're talking tackles, it wouldn't surprise me in the least if he's the third tackle off the board because I really like what he put forth at the combine and you match it up with the tape, and he's a guy that I think is going to really come off the board in the top 15. Wouldn't surprise me if a team like Oakland at 14 snatches up a guy like Jack Conklin in the draft. So. You look at Taylor Decker, I wasn't really blown away by Taylor Decker, 5.23, 40. Uh, really didn't see him look that explosive. Didn't really see him have smooth transitions, getting out of his stance, getting around the cones. Wasn't really fluid. I didn't think he moved as well as I was hoping. And so, again, I don't think he hurt himself necessarily, but I don't think like a guy like Jason Spriggs or Ryan Kelly out of Alabama or even a guy like Cody White here who I think they all helped themselves. I don't think Taylor Decker helped himself. I just think he went out, performed. It is what it is. Maybe he'll do a better job in his pro day, but I just think he overwhelmed uh, the scouts and the evaluators with his performance. I think he just went out and he performed. And to, to, to his credit, he did everything, but I wasn't impressed with Taylor Decker on the day. So you go from the offensive lineman, and I just want to say this, this offensive line group, not as athletic as we've seen in the past. The offensive line group from about two, three years ago with Greg Robinson, Taylor Lawan and company, those guys were freaks. That was probably the most athletically gifted offensive line group I've ever seen. That's not what this group is, but it's a solid group of offensive linemen that I think are gonna have an impact on the league and some of these guys are gonna come in and help immediately along the offensive line. And so we saw the best of the best along the offensive line. I thought they came out and performed well for the most part. You move on to the running backs and this is a little bit different. They switched it up. Normally the running backs are right around day three on Sunday. They moved the running backs all the way up to day one this year. So that was a little bit different. And so we knew who the star attractions were at the running back position. Of course, Ezekiel Zeke Elliott out of the Ohio State University. And of course, Heisman Trophy winner Derrick Henry out of Alabama. Those were the guys that we were going to be focusing in on. But there were some other guys that showed up that I've, I've been talking about throughout the process thus far. As other guys that you can get on that second tier, the second wave of bats. Let's talk about Ezekiel Elliott first though. 5'11", 225 pounds. He talked about he was going to run a sub 4 5 40. Well, he did exactly what he said he was going to do. 4 4 7 40. Ran and pretty much solidified he's going to be the first back taken in this draft. 32 and a half inch vertical, 9.8 um, uh, broad jump. So, again, I thought he went out, solidified himself as the, the best back in this draft, and he's going to be the first back taken. And with that speed now shown, with that size, I think now the question now starts to begin in the top 10 because without that speed, I don't know if he's in the discussion in the top 10, but now showing the ability to break away with that 447, I think now that question starts. If you're the Cowboys, if you're one of these teams in the top 10 that could use a running back that has a, a running game like the Ravens too, don't forget about Baltimore. And, and again, the Ravens need so much help on defense that I don't even think he could be in the discussion for them at six. But again, if you're one of these teams that predicates your, your offense around the run, it's hard not to have the discussion in the war room about Ezekiel Elliott and making him the pick after seeing what you saw in day one of the combine. Go on to Derrick Henry at 6'3", 247 pounds. Thought he showed up a little heavy. It did not matter. The guy's an athlete. 37 inch vertical, which is insane. Just think about that for a second. A 6'3", 247 pound running back with a 37 inch vertical. 10'10 on the broad, which is ridiculous. It's crazy. And 22 reps of two and a quarter. It, it all amounts to four, five, two in the 40, which is absolutely insane. I think his official time might have been a four, five, four. Either way, it's nuts. This guy's an athlete and I told you that he was gonna run really fast. He was gonna jump really high. But the, the, the fact of the matter still remains, he's not a guy with great agility and, and bigger bats normally struggle with that. And I, I, let me say this about Ezekiel Elliott. I thought he struggled catching the football. I was not impressed with his hands. He's not a natural hands catcher, and neither is Derrick Henry. He's what I call a clapper. 
He claps with the football. He caught most of the footballs that were thrown. He catches the football well enough. And so if you want to use him in a screen game, fine. I'm not saying that he's a guy you want to actually run routes with. Neither is Ezekiel Elliott in my mind. And everybody was making the comp to Le'Veon Bell. Ezekiel Elliott is not Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell is a natural hand catcher. He's one of the best receiving backs out of the backfield in the entire National Football League. Ezekiel Elliott is not. He struggled in the pass catching drills with the running back. So go ahead and take his name out of your mouth. If you think he's Le'Veon Bell, you're wrong. That's not who he is, but he's a hell of a back. He's very versatile, and I think he's gonna come in and help a team right away. So is Derrick Henry. Again, I don't think he's a natural hands catcher, but that guy gets a lot of things done on the football field, and with that speed and that size, he's a workhorse, and I think he's the type of guy that you can give it to 25 times in a game and not have to worry about this guy slowing down at all throughout the course of the football game. A guy that really jumped out at me, and every year you have this at the combine where a couple of guys that you don't know anything about, and they come out and they perform well. And I thought, one of those guys, Tyler Irvin, okay? San Jose State running back, 5'10", 192 pounds. You said, man, that's a small guy. But he was a workhorse at San Jose State. 39-inch vertical, 10'8 on the broad, 4'4", 140. And I'm going to tell you right now, of all the guys there, he looked as natural a pass catcher out of the backfield as anybody at the combine at the running back position. He caught just about everything on the day. Fluent, smooth athlete. One of these guys that I think can be very explosive and dynamic. Also can return kicks for you in the returns game. I think he's going to be a steal for someone in the draft. But again, every year we see guys that run really fast like Dre Archer did a couple years ago and at the combine not have an impact at the next level. Let's see if this guy can have an impact, but I really like what Tyler Irvin did on the day. He opened my eyes. I'm looking forward to seeing where this guy lands in the draft. And if they, if he lands in the right space and opportunity, he could have an impact in his rookie campaign with the numbers that he put up at the combine and the production that he had at San Jose State. CJ Prostice, one of my most favorite backs in this draft, being a Notre Dame Fighting Irish fan, seeing CJ Prostice come to the combine at six feet, 220. First year back, at Notre Dame, was a wide receiver, so he's a convert over the running back. He's raw, but he still looks natural as a running back out of the backfield. And what's scary is he's just touching the surface. He's just scratching the surface as a running back. He catches the football like a wide receiver, being an X receiver, it's natural for him. So he's gonna catch it out of the backfield. He's a guy that I think you can hand it off to as well. I really like what CJ Prosize brings to the NFL game, and I think he could be an asset for someone. Again, another one of these guys, if he finds himself in the right situation, he could be a great fit for a team. 35 and a half inch vert, which is tremendous for a guy his size. 10-1 um, in the broad. 4, 4, 8, 40, and unlike years past, I can't remember a running back crop that was so explosive. Normally the running backs that I've seen over the last five years or so, we've got one or two guys that are fast, and then everybody else is 4, 5, 5, 4, 5, 7, 4, 6, 1, 4, 6, 3. That wasn't the case this year. It was a lot of 4, 5, 5s and below. A lot of sub 4, 5s in this draft class. A lot of guys flying up and down that 40. CJ Prosize was one of those guys, and I thought he caught the football just as well as Tyler Irving did on the day. And to me, those guys stood out catching the football and being explosive. Those are two guys that I think as third down backs can come in and help you right away at the next level. What about Kenyon Drake? A guy at Alabama, 6'1", 210, is a guy that hasn't been able to stay healthy at Alabama, but when he was healthy, he's been a force for them. Kickoff return, we saw him be able to be dynamic in that sense in a national championship game versus Clemson with a touchdown as a kick returner. This guy can catch the football out of the backfield. They would split him out in Alabama and throw him routes and he would win and he would score touchdowns. He can be a dynamic playmaker for you. At 6'1", 210, that's a big bat. 34 and a half inch vertical. 4, 4, 5, 40, so Kenyon Drake flying as well. Another one of these guys I think can help you out of the backfield as a change of pace guy. So there are a number of guys that can come in and help you out of the backfield. No Devontae Booker uh, dealing with the injury. Talked about the meniscus and all those things. He had to check out medically. If you haven't had a chance, check out the podcast. Talked about that on the pod. But 
It would have been nice to have seen him have to wait on Devontae Booker and see how he's doing. But I was a little disappointed with some guys. We'll talk about that in a second. But the guy that stole the show early was Keith Marshall, a Georgia running back. And it's funny, Todd Gurley, ex-teammate, said, hey, he's about to run a 4-3. So he already knew what was really good. And he ran a 4-3-1. And he was blazing fast. Blazed it twice. First time unofficially was 4-2-9. Ended up being 4-3-1 officially. So Keith Marshall came out. Ran really well, but he's not a guy that's going to come in and change the game as a running back. So if he's going to make a roster in the NFL, it's going to be on special teams and doing a number of things. So we'll see what happens with him. But there's some guys that was that were really disappointing. I was disappointed in Indiana running back Jordan Howard. I thought he would be more explosive. He looked like he was hampered. And he was a guy that dealt with a number of injuries at Indiana. He looked really sluggish. He didn't look explosive. He doesn't have natural hands. He struggled in the, in the pass catching drills. I wasn't blown away by Jordan Howard. I was a little disappointed, frankly, because he's one of the guys that I really like in this draft class in that second tier of backs. And I, I didn't think he really showed any separation from any of the other backs. In fact, I thought he actually took a step back, if you ask me, with his performance. Uh, Kelvin Taylor, uh, the son of Fred Taylor, I thought he struggled the entire day. Ran a slow 40. Uh, I thought that in the pass catcher drills, he might have been the worst back out there. He dropped a number of passes, probably the most dropped passes of any back. Obviously, does not have natural hands. Thought he struggled running some of his routes. He just struggled to me in general. Didn't follow directions on one of the drills where they told him to toss the football to the uh, coach. He threw it on the ground, and I, I just thought he struggled entirely the entire day. He struggled, and I was very disappointed in him as well. But as a, as a whole, the running back class was impressive. Saw a lot of guys go out, run fast, and Mike Mayock talked about quick, quicker than fast, and guys normally either being one or the other. Well, this is a group where there were a lot of quick and fast running backs, and that's good to see because I think the running back position has been devalued because, yes, the passing game has taken over in the National Football League. That is a fact. But also, a lot of these guys can't hit home runs. We're not going to uh, pass over the passing game, which is big plays and you're moving the football and you're getting the football into the end zone off of big plays through the passing game. If guys are going to get four yards in the cloud of dust, if we get backs that can actually take it to the house and make game-changing plays, then that might change the idea that backs are a dime a dozen because I don't like that that backs have become really disposable commodities over the last you know five to seven years and so if guys come out like this that are athletic that can run that can change a game with one carry with one catch with one screen it may change the way we look at running backs in that position and maybe we'll value it a little bit more moving forward but that's day one of the combine come back we'll cover day two big day tomorrow quarterbacks and receivers We'll have a lot to break down tomorrow. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the lab room. Come back and join me as I continue to break down anything and everything in the National Football League. Like I tell you every year, I watch eight hours of combine action so you don't have to. Come back tomorrow. We'll talk about day two of the NFL scouting combine. See you there. There's plenty more where that came from. While you're here, subscribe to the channel. If you want more Louis T, be sure to follow me on Twitter at in the lab room or you can like the Facebook page at in the lab room that's in the lab room on Facebook and at in the lab room on Twitter don't forget subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so